forget that right. Okay, for this, for I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And verse 24 says, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said. So if you will, get your bread out this morning. And if you'll hold it up, as our custom is around here, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for your son Jesus and the sacrifice that he paid for each and every one of us. The pain and the suffering that he took on his body, Lord. We just ask, Lord, that you bless us today. And as we take this in remembrance of you, that we know that you're, set it on, you're seated on the right hand of the Father and that you're interceding for us. And we just give you praise, honor, and glory for all that you've done for Redemption Church and all that you've done for each one of us individually. And as we take this, God, we ask that it's blessing to our body and it's healing to our body. And we take it in the name of Jesus. He said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance for me. After the same manner, he took the cup, and when he supped, he's saying, let's just, let's just pray again, if you will, hold it up, God. Heavenly Father, we just thank you today for your blessings, God. We thank you for each drop of blood that was poured from your body, God, for the salvation of the nations. God, we praise you, Lord, that your body and your blood that was shed is a covering for ours, God, that was so sinful. You knowing no sin became sin for each one of us, God. We thank you for the blood that was spilled on Calvary's hill. And God, we just ask you as we take it, God, that it covers every sin that was ever committed in our life. And we do this in Jesus' name. And he said, this is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Thank you, Jesus. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the opportunity, Lord, to stand in your presence and do this in remembrance of you until the day you come. Lord, we are expecting you at any time. We're worshiping you, God, like this could be our last time. Heavenly Father, we just ask, Lord, that it be any sin in any of us, God, that blood that was shed, cover it. God, if there's any sickness in any of us, your body that was broken and beaten so horribly will heal us. And we do this as often as we can, God, in remembrance of you. And we just give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, and let the church say amen. amen. Okay. <clears throat> Uncle Tim, if you will, this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity, God, to give into your kingdom. And as we do this, God, we do it as a cheerful giver. We love and we honor you today, God, and we thank you for all that you've done. And we've come bearing gifts in the name of Jesus. If you have your gift, bring it forward at this time. Let's make our worship team welcome as they come today. for a couple weeks and we wanted to sing it last week but we were missing some important people and we didn't want to sing without them so we're going to sing this morning but we're going to have fun because it's the beginning of the year so we might as well just start out with a bang I think so if you're willing and able I ask that everyone will stand 
And not only have fun with this song, because it is a fun song and the music is fun and we're gonna do something way crazy at the end, just be ready. But also, look at the words. It talks about how I'm a child of love. I found freedom, I found a friend, and I'm gonna climb a mountain and tell everybody about it.
It's about to get crazy up in here. Oh, we got gays on the piano. This is supposed to be way smoother than this, but just pretend it's going easy. Couldn't get anybody to do the horns, but I don't think they wanted to swap spit with Gaber Ben. <laughs> Madness around me 
Like a child who's afraid of the dark. But when I call on Jesus, all things are possible. I can mount on wings like eagles and soar. When I call on Jesus, mountains are gone. songs that she's going to sing next. Um, the first one is a fan favorite, the breakup song. And I think that this is a good song to start the year with, to just make up your decision that fear doesn't own me, yeah. hate doesn't own me, right. anxiety yeah. doesn't own me, anything that's holding you back, let it go. Yeah. Don't let that 
ruin your 2021, regardless of the world, regardless of other situations going on in your own life. Break up with that today. Sick and tired being sick and tired. Have as much of you as I can take. Oh, yeah. 
second song that I'm going to do isn't one that I wanted to do <laughs> at first. My grandma really likes it. And then I listen to it like the entire way home from Dewadric when I went to go drop off my textbooks with her. So I really liked it by then. <laughs> and I just think that, you know, we're talking about going into a new year, 2021, and letting go of things might be holding you back. But you might already be in the middle of a situation. Right. You might already not know where you are. You know, the new year might not mean anything to you because it might be the same as last year still. But I think that we can all agree that there's not a place where Jesus can't find you. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes we have to stop worrying about getting to a place where we think we deserve to be found and just ask him to meet us where we are right. now. Right. And that's kind of what this song says to me at least. <laughs> Meet me in the struggle, meet me in the fire, meet me 
Jesus, would you meet me there? Meet me in the struggle. Meet me in the fight. Meet me in the trouble. Jesus. 
Somebody, somebody, just before you go to your seat, let's just sing, oh, oh. how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because So what? 
place and he's here and we're here and, and I just watch I just watch as as the hearts begin to melt and the and the singers were singing and the songs were so powerful and and I say you know what some of these older people they're going through so don't leave me in the trouble don't leave me in the fight don't leave me in the darkest night but I watched as little Jasmine the spirit of God begin to move on her and the tears begin to flow look it's real it's not taught. It's real. When the power of God comes in on a baby and she just crying in the, in the anointing, I just want to say, oh, how I love Jesus. Yes, Lord. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me, to me he is so wonderful. Yes, to me. To me he is so wonderful. To me he is so wonderful. The Lord He's coming by he right now. By. Yes, Lord. You will find He's not too busy to hear your heart's cry. He is passing by this moment. Your needs to supply. Reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. give God a great hand clap of praise today. The, the worship service around here is just getting better Amen. and better. Amen. I just want to get into the, the service and the, the, the sermon that God has blessed me with. If Lenny can get it up there for me. I'm not going to be with us long because I believe what the Lord had intended has been done to some extent. Amen. Amen. And I just feel like that uh, going into this new year, God wants us to just continue to do what we've been doing. Amen. 
I mean, sometimes it looks like we gain, Darren, and sometimes it looks like we may fail. Sometimes it looks like we take a step forward and we get knocked back two steps. But God sees our hearts, and God knows what we're all about. I know that people say this and say that, but let me just tell you what this church is going to take, what it's going to take to make this church to continue to keep on going and to keep on moving and to keep on growing. It's things like I'm seeing happen at every worship service. When somebody goes down for prayer, they never go alone. When somebody has the audacity to walk out and say, God, I know you're speaking to my heart. Before you know it, we got more around the altar and on the stage than we do in the seats. And I'm just coming to tell somebody, if we want this thing to go forward and we want it to grow, keep doing what we've already been doing. Somebody say amen. I, I just want to confirm that Jesus Christ bought this church. Jesus Christ paid for this church. And Jesus Christ established this church. And the gates of hell, he said to, uh, to Peter one day, will not prevail against this church. Somebody agree with a hand clap of praise to the one that ordained, the one that bought, the one that set up this church. His name is Jesus. And on that rock we'll build. Amen. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 1 says this. Let brotherly love continue. Amen. Amen. That's what I'm talking about right there, Sister Marilyn, when it says, if you're hurting, I'm hurting. But when your joy is full, my joy is full. There ain't nothing, Sister Sally, that you can go through that you can't rely on your brothers and sisters. If they're true brothers and sisters in the Christian faith, there's nothing that you're going to go through alone. First of all, the Heavenly Father is going to dispatch angels and He's going to encamp around you and the thing that was sent to kill you, God is going to build a fence and they ain't going to even get nigh your dwelling. Somebody praise Him today. Let brotherly love continue. Let us take care of one another. Let us make sure the needs of our family is met. Amen. Let us make sure that when we pray and we fast, that we pray and fast for the church first. Let's put ourselves on the back burner and let us take care of one another first. Somebody praise him today. And after you took care of the people, the Bible tells us to be especially good of those of the household of faith. Amen. Go out of your way and help somebody. Go into their problem. Walk in there and don't let them do it alone. Get your hands dirty and love Jesus while you're loving that person. Somebody praise him in this place today. Let brotherly love continue. I have seen that better in this church than I've ever seen it in my life. Oh, we ain't got nothing, but we got each other. And we got Jesus. And when I look around and I see that we got Jesus and we got each other, I think to myself, God, I'm a rich and I'm a blessed human being because I got you and I got them. And they got you and they got me. And with that, we're going to march all the way until we hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Now enjoy what I've put to prepare for you, a home that you'll never have to leave. Somebody praise him today. Let brotherly love continue. When one of our friends is in trouble, we don't go and gossip about them. Even if they did do something that they shouldn't have done. We go to our knees and we go to our prayer closet and we incorporate a few people that ain't got nothing to gossip about or nothing to talk about. Remembering those things that are behind us, we press forward to that high calling and that high mark to bring them up out of the mari clay, saving their soul by compassion as the book of Jude says, loving the very appearance of Jesus Christ 
and one day knowing that if we'll stay true and we'll stay right with God and we'll help one another, we'll make it to the other shore. Somebody praise him in this place today. Let brotherly love continue. I don't know how about you, but I come to tell somebody I need you. Oh, how I need you. Every hour, Jessica, that you're going through the situation that God has said you have the strength to go through. Oh, how I need her strength. Oh, how she needs our strength. Oh, how she needs the Holy Spirit to come in and give her peace that surpasses all understanding. Let brotherly love continue. Jesus said, Jesus said that if you loved one another, the world would know that you're my disciples. And I've come to tell somebody, it's time that we just start loving unconditionally. Loving with the love of Jesus Christ. With the eyes that looked down 2,021 years ago and said, I'll go to the cross for them. I'll give my life for them. And if they'll call on my name, I'll save them. Somebody ought to give God some praise in this place today. Verse number two says, be not forgetful. We've lost this. And in the book of Matthew 24 says, because iniquity abounds or because sin abounds, the love of many will wax cold. Well, Hebrews over here in 13, verse number two says, be not forgetful to entertain strangers. Go out of your way to help somebody. Because I've come to tell somebody, you don't know who you're dealing with. Amen. You don't know who God put in your way to see if you are who you say you are. Amen. You don't know about the guy walking down the street or living in the alley. You don't know who that is. They may look like something, but they may be an angel that God sent along the way. And I promise you, if you encounter him with the love of Jesus Christ, he'll know you. And not only will he receive a blessing, but he's got something for you. You better be not forgetful to entertain strangers. Somebody give God some praise in this place. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers. Look after them. I heard of a young lady buying a brand new Bible with the intentions of giving it to somebody else, but she saw a man sitting on the corner on the street, and he was homeless, the looks of him was, and she gave him a Bible. I don't care if he ever does anything with it. She's got a reward in heaven coming. Somebody say amen. I don't care what anybody else says. You do what's right, you live your life with integrity, and let the God that we serve work out the difference. Somebody praise him today. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Not my word, it's God's word. Not my problem unless I don't do what he tells me to do. And I've come to tell somebody, if you know somebody that needs a little help, why don't you just be kind, pull over the car, and hand them some help? Why don't you learn how to get your hands a little bit dirty? Why don't we learn how to give just a little bit more? Because God that I serve gave all, and he gave his very best. It's time for the Christians to realize it's not about us. It's always been about him, the gifts and the talents that he's blessed us with. Go straight to him. Somebody ought to praise him today. You mean to tell me I could have entertained an angel? I didn't say it. The, the Bible told me that men of old that were full of the Holy Ghost wrote this. And I've come to tell you, I'm only reading you what God wanted you to hear this morning. Amen. Oh, it's 2021. God ain't changed. The church has changed. It's time for the church to get back on the straight and narrow. It's time for the church to do what he called us to do. It's time for the church to be where he told us to be. And it's time for the church to do what he told us to do. Somebody praise him today.
The question I asked today, would you do it if you knew it was an angel? More importantly than that, would you do it if you knew it was a soul that Jesus Christ died for? The angels can make one mistake and they're gone. Me and you are under grace and mercy and the presence of the Holy Spirit can seal us. But I've come to tell you, we are more important than the angels. And God said, if that's one that needs some help, I'm going to call you. I'm going to call you. I'm going to move in your heart. You better go take care of them because that's one of my babies, the one that my son died for. And I want them to have some help. And the help they need can come from you. Somebody praise him today. Verse 3, remember them that are in bonds. Don't forget about them. You say, you love me? When I'm in trouble, where are you? When I'm sick, where are you? When my world is falling apart, where are you? When it seems like I can't go forward, I can only go back, where are you? Remember me when I'm bound. Remember those that are bound. Remember the ones that you left behind you. Go back and get back with them. The good Samaritan walked by. He didn't have to do it, but he looked on the man that was half beaten, half dead, naked. And he said, you get on my animal. Let me wrap up your wounds. Let me pour some oil on it. Let me pay the way. And I believe one of these days, we're going to see that man in heaven just by the kindness of another per human being. Somebody praise him today. He said, remember them of bonds as bound with them. Oh, yeah? I'm not getting into that. It's not what the Bible just told me. They're bound. I remember the, the Apostle Paul writing, I'm bound, but the gospel is not bound. And I remember him saying that it was good for me that I was afflicted, that you would know that Jesus Christ can still save you. Act like your bond or somebody else is bound. Go where they are and be where they are until God gives them the freedom that you're living in. Somebody praise him today. Look at here. Remember them that are bond in bonds as bound with them. And them which suffer adversity as being yourself also in the body. Oh, we don't like to feel pain. We can get any kind of medicine, any kind of thing that you can think of to take the pain away. But when a brother or sister of Christ is going through pain, you ought to be feeling pain too. Amen. When they're going through some struggles, you ought to be in there too. When they're going through the darkest valley and seeing the shadow of the valley of death, how many knows you ought to be in there too? And you ought to be praying like the song that Casey said, Sweet Jesus, will you meet me right here? I'm not here by myself, but we are wanting you to be right in the middle of us. The Bible says where two or three are gathered in his name, he will be right there in the midst of them. In the struggle, in the pain, in the problem, in the desert, whatever you find yourself going through, if you'll just call on his name, and a couple of brothers and sisters will run around you. Let me tell you something. There can be a worship service that comes on in. And when it comes in, don't worry about nothing. Jesus is in the middle. And the trouble's over. Somebody praise him today. Being yourself also in the body. You don't smash your finger and your head don't hurt at the same time. If you stub your toe, everything hurts. And if one of ours is hurting, we all are hurting. But there's coming a day when there won't be no more pain. And there won't be no more sorrow. And there won't be no more crying. There won't be no more crime. There won't be no more disease. There won't be no more night. And there won't be no more sea. There's coming a day when we'll stand face to face with the one that brought us to where we are today. And we'll tell him, thank you, Jesus for meeting me in all my situations. I finally made it home. Where's my mansion and where's the friends that have come on before me? Somebody praise him today.
Well, you can't get all the praise without a little instruction. Amen. Amen. I like to shout, and I like to dance, and I like to feel good, but I know I gotta know why that I'm shouting and I'm dancing, I'm feeling good. There's got to be some instruction. And every once in a while, the God that I serve has to get out the apple switch and tune some children up. Somebody say amen. But it's only for your benefit and the benefit of our whole body. If you need a little tune-up, just let God tune you up. Because when he does it, it'll be right and you'll live and do better. Somebody praise him today. Amen. Four. Marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled but the whoremongers and the adulterers God will judge well I know you like the other part I know you was enjoying the shout but here's a reason that some of us ain't getting what we need from God because we ain't living like God told us to live somebody say amen I didn't write it only wish I did marriage is honorable in all Amen, somebody. Shacking ain't honorable in God's sight. Amen, somebody. It's time for people that call themselves Christians to live the way that Christians are supposed to live. A man find him a woman and marry that woman. Amen. And no more shacking. No more living together. Because God at some point is going to judge you for that. Somebody say amen. Marriage is honorable. The bed is undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God himself is going to judge. Verse 4, chapter 13 of Hebrews just wanted you to know that. Verse number 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness. And be content with such things as you have. For he, he has said, I will never leave you. And I won't forsake you. Somebody give God some praise. Amen. When you got it, he's with you. When you don't got it, Jim, he's with you. When you're going through the valley, he's with you. When you're in the biggest fight of your life, he's with you. It's time for the church to realize that God's word is true. And every man's a liar. And if he said, I'll go with you and I won't leave you, you can put your bank in heaven and you can count on it. Somebody just praising for a little bit. The writer says, for he has said, I will never leave you and I won't forsake you. Jim, when the rest of the world ran out the door on you, that just made room for Jesus to come in. When everybody else said, bye, 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 Jesus ran in the door. It's time for you to realize it was never about them. It was all about them leaving so he could come in. And I've come to tell somebody, I would rather have Jesus than a million friends. Somebody praise him in this place today. Verse 6, so that we may boldly say, Sister Shirley, I hope you're taking good notes on this one, <laughs> that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Yeah. Amen. Oh, it ain't the government. It ain't the welfare. It ain't nobody else. I couldn't have made it to where I was. Matter of fact, I'd have been dead sleeping in my grave if it wasn't for the Lord. The Lord is my helper. He's my every need. He fills them and he meets them each and every time. It wasn't about my education. It wasn't about my work ethic. It was about the Lord coming through and giving me the desires of my heart like he said he would. Somebody praise him today. Oh, the writer goes on and said, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Amen. Amen. Oh, you can kill this body. You can. But you can't kill my soul. And my soul is secure in the hands of Jesus. Amen. When you take this body, you could put it in the ground and you think that the trouble's just over. Let me tell you something. 
the Bible tells me not to touch my anointed and not to do my prophets any harm. You have just stirred up an army that you know nothing about. I remember Elijah when his helper was with him. He said, what are we going to do? And Elijah said this, Lord, open his eyes that he can see who's for us is greater than who's against us. And I don't care what anybody said. Kill this body and dispatch me to my home. Somebody praise him today. I won't fear what man can do. Man's limited. God is unlimited. My trust and my hope is in Jesus Christ. Amen. And man only has a short time and they're running out of time. And the devil only has a short time and he's running out of time. But I've got an eternity that looks greater than what I'm living in anyhow. I got a home that man didn't build. The home that I'm talking about was built by God's own hands. He's got my name on the door. He's got my name on the roll. And one of these days, and it won't be long, I'm going to go be where my name is. Somebody praise him today. Verse 7, remember them which have rule over you. Let me tell you something. A lot of the churches in our area are using this scripture to close their churches down. By saying, the governor said, the senator said, the mayor said. Let me tell you something. If it doesn't go according to God's word I don't care if a blue jay came down and said it it's not God's word and God told me to forsake not the assembling of myself together he knew when he wrote it in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 that there would be a time where COVID would run rampant We're in the year 2021, and I know that they'll be talking about 2020 as long as you and I live, but I've come to tell somebody, I've got to assemble. I've got to go to the house of God. I've got to get a fill up. I've got to do what he called me to do, because one day he's going to call my name, and when he calls my name, he's going to ask me what I did, and I've come to tell somebody, I'm going to be in the house of God. I'm going to obey those that have rule over me me as long as they confide in Jesus and I've come to tell you when it's church day it's church time you better be in the house of God somebody praise him today God ain't changed his word hasn't changed it's the same yesterday today and forever and I'm going to prove it to you in just a minute but let me tell you something we're going to follow the rules as long as they don't conflict with God's word and when they start conflicting with God's word it's better to listen to God than it is to listen to man somebody praise him in this place today I want you to go home today and I want you to get on the phone with somebody you know that should have been here and say man you missed it today all the Holy Spirit was working five and six year old kids were crying and the Holy Spirit tears were running down and praying for things that they had no idea that they needed prayed for I don't know about you but if you miss today or you miss any day you could miss a very word from God and I've come to tell you that's a terrible thing to do who have spoken unto you the word of God They stop it, remember those that have rule over you. But the Bible says to to, to follow those that have spoken the word of God. If it ain't of God, he didn't tell you to listen to it. Amen, somebody. We're building an army. We're not building a bunch of sissies. We're building an army that says, the Bible says, by these signs they can lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Amen. If they drink any deadly poison, it will not harm them. That's the kind of people I want to go to church with. That's the kind of people I want to know. Amen. Because there's coming a time that I may get in trouble. 
physically or spiritually and I know that if I got some good saints that have prayed up and listened to God and followed every instruction that he gave to them I know without any shadow of a doubt that somebody will get to the throne and when it gets to the throne God will dispatch angels and when he dispatches angels the problem that I'm having will be corrected once and for all somebody praise him in this place today Remember them which have rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith you can follow. Yep. We're following every little thing that comes down the pipe anymore. Amen. Wear a mask. We all run get mask. I, I'm going to just preach it. Look, I couldn't get a sermon till this morning. I don't care. That's how God does me sometimes. Matter of fact, I thought his brother was going to preach today. But that's okay because God had a word. They say do this and we all run do that. Seem like? You go here or don't go there. We can go to Walmart, but we can't go in and have dinner somewhere. We can brush each other in, in Myers or some other store, the gas station, the liquor store, but we can't go to church anymore. The Bible tells me to obey them that have rule over you according to the word of God. Amen, somebody. He also told me to put on the full armor of God that I'd be able to stand the wiles of the wicked one. There are some wicked people in high places, and it's time for the church people to start seeing what's going on and start praising his name and get ourselves out of this situation that we've let ourselves get into moving forward, standing taller, talking higher, and worshiping Jesus wherever you find yourself. Somebody praise him today. Considering the end of their conversation, if you got a friend that's always running their mouth and just gossiping and talking junk, get away from them. I don't care if you've been lifetime friends, get away from them. Follow somebody that's in the word of God. Somebody who loves Jesus. Somebody who wouldn't run nothing down. Somebody who would say, you know what? Their sin ain't no different than my sin. I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to lift their name up to the throne and I'm going to watch God do what God does. Then you can hang around them. You can finalize what they're hearing, the conversation that they're speaking. Follow it to the end because the end then will be Jesus Christ, Him crucified. He's the Savior of the world. He's the deliverer of human souls. Somebody ought to just praise Him today. Here's where I'm going to end. Verse number 8. Jesus Christ. The same yesterday. The same today. And the same forever. He don't change. He ain't going to change. You can't buy him. You can't sell him. You can't say this is what he said. What he said is in black and white, red and white. You're just going to have to trust him for his word. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. And he's the same when you see him in eternity. Somebody praise him today. Be careful who you listen to. Be careful of sugar-coated preaching sermons. Be careful of men that are in it just for the money. Be careful if somebody says, well, God's full of grace and he's full of mercy. He is right now. But there's coming a day he'll either be your master or he'll be your judge. And I've come to tell you, you're going to love him as your master. But if you ain't made the call and you ain't lived to the standard that he set before you, the one that he lived, if you don't get in that perfect walk, if you don't get in that narrow gate, if you don't get on that straight path, let me tell you something, you're not going where I'm going. I'm telling you the truth right now. 
he's the same yesterday and if it was wrong for your grandparents it's wrong for you and he's the same today and if it was wrong for your parents it's still wrong for you but if you'll call on his name and you'll confess with your mouth and you'll believe in your heart that Christ was raised from the dead to the glory of God and the Father, you will be saved. Your name will be written in the Lamb Book of Life and you can go on to be with Jesus. Somebody ought to praise him today. I love to shout as much as anybody. I love the word of God as much as anybody. I like to feel God's presence as much as anybody. But we're going to have to come up to a new standard in 2021. Because if you think the devil's going to back off or back up, you got another thing coming. I've read the back of the book, and yes, we do win. But there's a fight coming where a man is going to have to make up his mind. Yes, I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. And only because Jesus loved me first. There's coming a day where you'll say yes to Jesus and no to man and give your life for it. But right now is a time that you get yourself built up on the most holy conversation and you get ready for the day of the Lord. Somebody praise him today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. The old saints used to say it'll make you talk right. It'll make you walk right. And it'll make you spit white. Amen. I've come to tell somebody there's another rung on the ladder. Bottom floor ain't for you. He's called you. He's gifted you. And he's expecting something from you. It's time for you to say, I don't care about sin anymore. I'm selling out to Jesus Christ. And I'm going to start right now. Somebody praise him today. We always talk about New Year's resolutions. My New Year's resolution today is preach harder, Amen. to love more, to encourage more, to go deeper and deeper depths with Jesus Christ, to look for that one that was lost, that one that don't have a friend, that one that's left over here by himself, and to do whatever it takes to get them encouraged, to get them built up, to get them lifted up, to get them in the house of safety. Just like it was in the days of Noah, it's getting ready to rain. And when God shuts the door, no man can open it. This time it won't rain water and the fountains won't break up. I've come to tell you this time, Jesus Christ is going to come with a shout and it's going to rain fire and brimstone. Somebody say amen. And the only insurance program you need today is the precious Holy Ghost burning rich and deep. Something that's already burned up by the Holy Ghost will never be burned up by the fire and brimstone. Somebody praise him today. There's been enough preached today to save the entire world. And not only that, to change our country into something that we could be proud of. Our country ain't too far gone if the saints of God are get in their prayer closets. Amen something. Amen somebody. I want to leave something to my children and my grandchildren. And what I want to leave to them is the name that is above every name. And at that name every knee will confess and every knee will bow. That Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Amen. Amen. As we stand. As we stand today. We all need to take another step. And we all need to go to a different place. And we all need to be a little bit tighter with Jesus Christ. We're going to need him, Jim. We're going to need him tomorrow more than we needed him yesterday. We're going to need him. And it's time for each and every one of us to realize the only separation that we have with Jesus is our fault. Amen. You want more? There's more than you could ever ask for. Amen. They said that a baby could swim in the water that is Jesus Christ. Amen. But it's also deep enough that an elephant could drown in it. And I've come to tell each and every one of you, you got as much as you want because there's more. And if you want Jesus rich, somebody say, I want him rich and deep in my life. I want all the blessings that he's gotten my name on that's sitting over in some warehouse in glory that says John Henry Saylor I got more for you I want what he's got for me 
Somebody say amen. Everybody, if you're able, raise your hands in total surrender to God. Heavenly Father, we know it's 2021 and we're just asking God, as we come into your presence in this year, you've already been here, but we're in here for the first time that we love you and we honor you with everything that we have, all of our substance, we give to you, God. We give you our praise. We give you our honor. We give you our worship. And today and from now on, you're going to be first in our life. It's the year 2021, God, and we just want to live better and closer to you. And let the church say amen.